Hi there, welcome to Believe It or Not. I'm August Edelman with Interfaith Grand River. And in this series, we're going to be doing a series of interviews with people about their faith journeys. Today, I'm joined by Jay Moore from the humanistic tradition. Humanistic? Humanist? Humanist, yes. Humanist tradition. Hi, Jay. Hi. So, welcome. Thanks for being our first guest. Thank you. So, tell me about yourself. Um, well, I was uh, born into a um, very religious family. They were a fundamentalist evangelical family. So, that means that uh, our whole lives were, were uh, built around the church. Uh, I grew up um, Sunday school all the time, many hours around the service thing. We were also um, oh, schooled in things very, very... Um, intensely, for instance, uh, became an expert at finding verses in the Bible. I, <laughs> I could do that in a flash. I still can. Um, and and uh, but the one of the, the elements of that was uh, we always thought of ourselves as separate. So we were. My mother always said, for instance, when we were children, remember you are not. You are only in the world. You are not of the world. Meaning we were always separate. So we were somehow special. Now, there, no one would say that they were special then. They would just say they were fortunate that they, God saved them. Mm -hmm. But um, nonetheless, as a child, you, you, it's pretty hard not to come up with the idea that somehow we're special and everybody else is bad. So uh, that was a big part of the environment. <clears throat> that was very difficult for me to, um, to deal with as I became more aware because I started to see around me uh, people who were not one of the very few little, you know, enclosed little group of born again Christians, um, and they were good people. Mm. They were nice people. They seemed to, in fact, be nicer sometimes than the Christians I knew. <laughs> How could that be? You see, so th if the world was really ruled by Satan, and we were, you know, just having to struggle with that and protect ourselves against it all the time. How do you deal with people? Well, it was never really, never really explained to me clearly how that could be. Um, so I think I was a very observant child, and I just started realizing, wait a second, this little, some of this isn't making a lot of sense to me. I think those words, I wouldn't have said those words until I was a rebellious teenager, and, and, and it was going up maybe the senior high school, uh, where I really, really would put a lot of language around some of these questions. and and um, start to see that uh, maybe my parents weren't right. Um, so <clears throat> um, uh, from there, I uh, off to university and then started learning a whole lot of new things. And I think the, uh, by the time I was about 25, I really had to leave that particular form of Christianity. Mm -hmm. I think I would call, I called myself a Christian still, but I was starting to move towards a more liberal kind of thing. So over my lifetime, I've just slowly, every decade or so, I've, I've kind of moved further and further away um, until the point where I would say that I was agnostic. I mean, you know, by the time I was uh, uh, 50, I was uh, 55, whatever, something like that. I didn't call myself an atheist until I was 65. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, it was a gradual process over a lifetime to really get to the place where I would say I, I don't have a real belief in a supernatural deity being anymore. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> however, there was a lot of good that I was taught. I was taught to be good. I think that good human beings are good human beings, and they can raise their children to be good as well without a lot of this other uh, stuff, mm -hmm. doctrine and dogma that goes with it. So I was, uh, there was a lot of goodness in me, I think, and um, so uh, that translates finally in this stage of my life to be humanism. Mm -hmm. So I, that's kind of a short version of the whole journey there. So you mentioned humanism is sort of where you've ended up now. Yes. Can you tell me a bit about what that means to you and, and how you came to it? Sure. Um, uh, a lot of time is spent in arguing about what God is or isn't. Uh, you know what what it means. So uh, what's what's uh, what's true, what isn't, and so on in a, in a supernatural way or cosmic kind of way. And and, I, and um, one can get pretty focused on that, and it can be all pretty academic, pretty negative. 
But I keep coming back to, but what it is, what it is that gives my life meaning. Mm. And so I would come back to things like love and compassion. Um, those are the things that can give my life meaning. It's not just that I am, can be loving. It's that I really benefit from the love I receive as well. So the compassion of others, the love of others. And so uh, it's relationships um, that really matter to me. And, and mostly among humans, it can also be among other living beings, the planet, and so on. You know, like you start extending it that way. But humanism is the positive uh, alternative to uh, leaving a religion and mm. finding a lot of reasons wrong with things and finding that there's, there isn't stuff. It's, at least it's, it's negative. It's always the negative. Mm. So humanism is the positive. Lovely. That's lovely. So yeah, moving away from thinking in a very negative way about what something isn't. Yes. So what is? Yes. Yes. That's lovely. Yeah. Do you have like a community here or, yes. um, of, of people who are also humanists? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not all humanists. Okay. I belong to the Unitarian uh, congregation. It's called Grand River Unitarian Congregation. So um, among us are, are many people who are humanist. Um, probably most of them would be in the agnostic atheist kind of uh, category, but that's only about uh, half. Hmm. Uh, the other half are people who have other kind of theistic views, perhaps deistic kind of views. Uh, there are uh, people who come out of uh, traditions that they still carry in some way. For instance, there are progressive Christians uh, within our uh, congregation as well. So the focus there is not on what you believe because uh, we know that many people believe many different things. Mm -hmm. The focus there is on some principles that have to do with uh, how we interact with, how we're in relationship with each other and the world. So to me, that's humanism. So uh, as much as the Unitarian Church doesn't say, we are a humanist organization, uh, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not prejudiced, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I I could say this. Yeah, I would say all good people are humanists. Interesting. Can yeah. you expand on that? Well, um, just to, for the kinds of points I was describing about the focus on the on the things that have to do with relationship and love and mm -hmm. compassion and and uh, so on. So, I, it, it it almost doesn't matter what you believe mm -hmm. to me. It matters what you do. Right. So. Um, uh, I think then that all good people, they could be very religious people, and, and they could say to themselves, or to me, I am, only, I am religious because God tells me to be good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm good because God tells me to be good, or I'm good because it's important to be good in God's eyes, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I would say, well, great, yes, that's, you believe is the, is the purpose or the, the, the rationale mm -hmm. for being good, but... The ultimate res the ultimate end is you're good, and so that's great. I'm good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's more okay. good people, the better. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, all good people are humanists. Lovely. Yeah. So that sounds like a pretty profound shift over the course of your life and oh. how you think and believe and yeah. and perceive yourself. Um, how has that impacted you? Well, um, certainly. The impact from the beginning and then the, the turbulence of going through the separation from that was very painful. Um, uh, you know, you, you, if you, uh, you're primarily, you know, your, your primary attachments are to your you know, close family. And those are the people that I had to um, separate from, uh, in a sense. Uh, they, they were not happy about all this and not accepting and forgiving about all this. Uh, my mother tells me, told me um, often that she cried every night on her knees praying to God that I would come back to the fold, would come back to Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so um, even today I go to my weddings and funerals and so on and sit with people who are very uh, standoffish with me and not, don't want to engage me and so forth. I really get the cold shoulder, and uh, that's tough. That's really tough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's that was the, how it impacted me then. 
Uh, then there's the, you know, the 10 years of wandering in the wilderness, as I call it, you know, the, the being lost, mm -hmm. being um, not knowing what, what, what end was up, really, um, feeling angry a lot. Um, had to, I've had to deal with a lot of anger because I, I believed I was deceived. I believe I was duped. I mm. believed I was misled. And I suffered for a lot of reasons I don't think were necessary for me to suffer. Um, now, so you know, for many years, I had a lot of anger to deal with as well. Um, I'm really happy in this place, though, uh, now, and I'm happy to be part of the community that I'm a part of. Um, I'm happy to be part of this organization with uh, Interfaith Grand River because I can it's I can see how we can all come together. And to me, this is so good after a lifetime of fighting with, mm -hmm. with this stuff or feeling deserted, you know, or feeling like, I, like, like uh, separated and, uh, uh, from all of my um, um, closeness and, and a sense of connection and so forth. So it's, it's great. It's really, really good at this point in my life to, um, to have what I have. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So you mentioned that you have this great community, this sort of extended family. What have you learned from them? Well, um, I certainly have been able to enhance this idea of humanism. That is the idea that I, you know, the, what comes from within me is compassion, is love. Mm -hmm. And what I can receive is compassion. And what I can see and receive is love from others. So um, that gets emphasized and practiced and and uh, and there's people who uh, express it and um, so I learn about the application of all that you know just by being in the group mm -hmm. and thinking about what it is we're doing in this world while we're here um, but then it, there's also this this other side of this which helps me a lot which is uh, not being so judgmental with myself even mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. like um, I was raised in an environment where it was always, you know, oh, I'm, I'm a sinner, I'm terrible, and, you know, and so on, and I need forgiveness, and, uh, uh, you know, that stuff. And so, uh, that, and it becomes a lot of hardware in there, uh, not just the software. It's actually kind of hardware that has to be uh, altered mm -hmm. uh, or, 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 or substituted in some way later on in life because you can't, it's difficult spending a life feeling like you're not good enough for you need, you know, you're you're sinful or you're wrong or you, you, you can never be good enough or so on. So, so uh, I uh, recognizing that I'm okay. Mm. That really, I'm okay. I, I I'm one of many people on this planet, and we're all struggling here, all doing what we can. And there's good and there's bad, and 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 I'm one of them. And yeah. So I'm just doing the best I can. I'm okay. And the, so that trying to translates also into not taking myself so seriously, like. Uh, not getting caught up in so many things where I, whether it's just self judgment or whether I, um, I, 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 I'm, it's all self judgment. You know, it's really, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just, it's just not taking myself so seriously yeah. um, means that I have a lot more to learn. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things grow out of that. Yeah. And one of the things that I recently that grows out of, there was when somebody I watched a video and I was watching this guy talk about some of these philosophical and uh, faith things, and he said this. He said, uh, "I am at peace with my lack of peace." Mm, that's great. Isn't that great? Yeah. See, so I went, "Oh, oh yeah," like that fits for now. Like I wouldn't have known thirty years ago. I wouldn't have even twigged on that, but now it fits. I am at peace with my lack of peace. Oh, yeah. I don't have to be 100% peaceful all the time and together all the time. I'm okay the way I am. Yeah. And even when I've, I don't, I'm seeking peace, I want peace in my life, and I'm sort of a, this, uh, visualizing this kind of uh, effort to reach some sort of cosmic peace, <laughs> um, there's this uh, statement that says it's okay. It really is okay that you're not there. You know, it's all right. Yeah. So I am at peace with my lack of peace. I love that. Just yeah. like some patience and gentleness with yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Especially, yeah. you know, to undo some of those yeah. more kind of rigid ways of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. What practices bring you comfort? Um, music. Mm. Music is uh, uh, 
a big part of comfort for me. And we do, we really do music at the Grand River Unitarian Congregation. <laughs> I'm putting in a plug now, a commercial. Okay. <laughs> if you like good music in a service, we have great music. Uh, so that's good. I find I'm very moved. Uh, I, I can be standing and, and singing uh, something in the service and I'm break, burst into tears. Like, like really, like I have to hold back because it would be embarrassing to really, you know, let myself, but I feel really deeply uh, experiencing music, doing it myself. I sing, play guitar, and perform, and not perform in church services and so forth. So uh, that really brings me a lot of comfort. Um, um, I, I like being with my people. I call them my people. It's, they're like an extended family. Mm -hmm. So I feel a real need to go and a real need to be with people. I am an extrovert, naturally, and so I like to be reaching out to touching people. And, and uh, so I get a chance to do that with, some, with, with really good people. These are my extended family now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, those would be two things, yeah, yeah. So if you could tell the people at home, you know, is there something that you want people to know? Uh, I, I would say that um, uh, I think it's important for you to be your own guide mm. for your spiritual journey, ultimately, and you to be your own, uh, I was going to say judge, but I don't mean judge, I mean your own gatekeeper mm. as to what works and what doesn't work uh, for you. Uh, I think sometimes in conventional religions you're not encouraged enough to to really find your own path. I think the, the words are said, well you know you're there to find your own path, but what they really mean is <laughs> for you to find the path we want you to go down <laughs> and you know that God wants you to go down and that is not what I would advise I I think it's important for people to recognize that they are their own gatekeeper and they create their own path I heard some very wise person this morning actually say um, say that he said something about uh, his journey is to find the best path for him like mm. for himself so I, I would agree with that and um, so from my book, in my book, if there are 8 billion people on the planet, there are 8 billion different paths that people are taking. There isn't one. Mm -hmm. And no one religion or anything has a, has a lock on truth. That's for sure. I, I could take that to the bank, I think. <laughs> but um, uh, that, that reflects then on each individual. Like, you are your own, you are your own best guide. Find for yourself. Let's make it, put it, put the pieces together for yourself. Uh, be your own gatekeeper as to what's 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 coming in, what you let in, mm -hmm. and what you put out. You know. Yeah. So that would be my advice. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jay, for being our very first guest here on Believe It or Not uh, for Interfaith Grand River. Thank We didn't really talk about what you do outside this room. Well, I, I do as little as possible. Oh. <laughs> that would be the answer to that thing. <laughs> really. I retired and decided I've been busy 35 years. I don't need to be busy anymore. Valid. Absolutely <laughs> valid. <laughs> so.